It was very late at night. My friends and me were walking back home from my cousin's 15th birthday party. Everything was really dark and we didn't really know the time, nor had a vehicle. The only friend who did had left the party earlier that night without us noticing, so we had to walk along the highway, pointing our thumbs up every time a car passed by, unsuccessfully trying to get a lift home. We got to this lonesome part of the highway, not a car in sight. More than a weird feeling, the whole situation made us feel concerned, and yes, a little scared, since we remembered this used to be a busy highway. We continued walking despite that. Deep inside, I had a bad feeling that grew stronger. After some minutes, the road remained empty. Half an hour later, we finally saw the lights of a car approaching very fast. My friends and I started to signal and wave our arms, but he wouldn't stop. Once he was close to us, the driver slowed down. He had a very marked look of fear on his face, and with a trembling voice, he said, You, you, you better get away from here. I had never seen someone so terrified in my life. The man stepped on the pedal and left at full throttle, leaving us in the middle of nowhere, totally confused and without any idea of what he talked about. Anyway, we kept our way. The path along the highway led us to a small forest. The lampposts were so far from each other, we barely had a light source, coming mainly from the moon. In the distance, we managed to see a small light between the trees. We got closer and saw this small house in the woods. It seemed to be inhabited since the lights that guided us there came from inside the place. With some distrust, we decided to knock on the door. No one answered. We waited for a bit, in case they were busy, then knocked again. Nothing. I started to fret. So I took a look inside through the window. To my surprise, it was empty. This odd situation spooked us a little bit, but we continued our way since being spooked wasn't taking us anywhere. At some point, we began feeling as if we were being followed. We heard noises and woman sobs, painful ones. We got really nervous, but my friends, as to calm the whole group, said it was a bad hangover playing tricks on us. But deep inside, because I could hear the same noises and I hadn't drunk a drop of alcohol. We kept walking, now looking in every direction in case something strange happened. After several minutes, we found the home again. There had been someone there. Out of despair, we knocked on the door again. Nothing. We tried again, but harder, yet there was no answer. I decided to look through the window once again. To this day, I still regret it. Inside the place, I saw someone. A woman with long, black hair that covered her face, so I couldn't see her well. She was sitting alone at a dining table, and seemed to be eating some sort of meat. Raw meat, I noticed, because of the deep red color and how difficult it was for her to bite it. I took a closer look and saw, horrified, a person with only half their face. The other half was all red, scraped and bitten off so badly I couldn't say exactly if it was a man or a woman. It was deformed and seemed to have been killed several days ago. As I stepped back, I saw how she lifted her pale face. She had scars and poorly done stitches. I couldn't see her eyes. A shadow was on her eye socket and her lips were black. That strange woman began to move her lips, as if reciting something in a low voice. I could read her lips, and a chill invaded my entire body. Fresh meat. She 
said repeatedly and even faster. My skin immediately turned pale and my mouth dried. Panic took over us and we dashed away from the house. I turned my head back and she was following us. She wasn't even running, she just floated toward us incredibly fast. Morning wasn't coming anytime soon. This felt like the longest night of all. She touched our backs, but didn't hurt us. I turned back and saw her again as I kept running, exhausted and on the verge of fainting. The only strength I could gather to keep running came from fear. I saw how her mouth was covered by a blood-stained kerchief. Her jaw moved as if saying something to us as we ran, but we didn't hear anything. She finally lost our trail. Daylight hadn't come yet and we were desperate and tired. We didn't want to stop. When we ran, we could hear screaming and laughter. It was hell itself. I thought this was the end. We hid among some trees, taking advantage of her absence, and we fell exhausted after that run. The panting and rapid heartbeats were irrepressible. We decided to stay there since we were too tired to continue. We waited and waited until the day finally dawned and the rays of hope hit our faces. There were no trace of that apparition, so we decided to keep going to leave that infernal place. We got out of the woods and something made me look back to the depths of the forest. There she was, looking at us turning her face to us, signaling with her finger and laughing. Then she vanished. Our clothes were bloodstained, our backs were thoroughly scratched, but weirdly enough, they didn't hurt. That experience scarred us. You can't go through that and be the same person. A couple of months passed, two out of my three friends committed suicide. One of them slit his wrists and the other hung himself in his mother's backyard. In his hand, he held a piece of paper that read, She Watches Us. The last of my friends traveled abroad, but his family never heard from him again. It's just me now. That woman stands outside my window every night and looks at me, with her blood-stained kerchief covering her mouth, just standing there without muttering a word. When I wake up, I have scratches on my legs and messages in my room written in blood that say, I'm waiting for you with your friends by my side. I don't know what else to do. I went to visit the local priest to solve the problem, since it was the only solution I came up with. I spoke to him, but he only kissed my forehead and on a rather disappointing tone said, I'm sorry son, I can't help you with your problem. She doesn't want to get away from you. She'll linger until she has you too. I resigned to think my life was ruined by that demonic presence and that I was helpless. Despite that, the father invited me to attend church, which I always do, and now I don't have any scratches, nor are there messages in my room. It's just her, standing outside my window, ever watching, while I'm regretted having peeked at that window that unfortunate night. <laughs>